everyone, and thanks for checking out part six in the American Civil War Gaming Club's Civil War Campaign Series. In this part, we will take a look at the basics of artillery and artillery tactics. We will also go over how to unlimber and limber your guns, how to move and fire them, along with how to spike and recruit them if necessary. Understanding artillery usage and how to best deploy them is critical to your success on the battlefield. If you enjoy this video, be sure to check out our club's website at acwgc.net, where you will find tutorials, videos, and a lively club of Civil War gamers to battle against. For now though, let's head over to the battlefield of Antietam, also known as Artillery Hell, for our artillery demonstration. The anchor of any army is its artillery. In these games, the artillery is organized in one of two ways, either by full batteries or by sections. Usually, a full battery will consist of four guns for the Confederates and six guns for the Federals. When divided into sections, these batteries will have individual two-gun units as shown here. In part 4, we covered how units move and what movement points are, so I won't go over that too much here. Artillery units move at the same rate as infantry along turnpikes, roads, and trails, but are much slower once they turn off the roads and head into the rougher terrain. To check out exactly how many points it costs to move artillery over different types of terrain, remember that you can view this in the parameter data up here in the Help drop-down menu. The games have a number of different artillery units. There are field artillery units, by far the most common, but also horse artillery, emplaced artillery, and mortars. Each of these has their own unique advantages. Field artillery can be moved and massed and will undoubtedly be your most numerous on the field. These batteries, when grouped, can devastate an enemy position. Horse artillery is basically the same as field artillery with one notable difference. Horse artillery supports the cavalry forces, and because of this, their total movement points equal that of the cavalrymen's. This makes them very effective pieces to move rapidly across the board and also over poor terrain and through uncharted territory. Emplaced artillery are the larger and more powerful pieces, which are usually found around cities and forts. These non-movable guns are susceptible to being outflanked in an attack and should need close infantry support at all times. Lastly, mortars are able to lob shells into the air and into any hex within their range. This means that you do not need a line of sight to fire on the enemy, but the mortars are not very accurate and you may not always hit your target unless you have a line of sight. Artillery can only move when they are limbered up and can only fire when they are unlimbered. Therefore, it is obviously important to have them in the right formation at the right time. To unlimber or limber the guns, we just highlight the unit and click over here. Artillery cannot fire right away, but must wait a full turn until they can fire offensively. They can fire defensively at any time though while unlimbered. Artillery uses ammunition from the army's stockpile of shells, which are shown down here in the corner. The Union supply is shown first and the Confederates second. As you can see, we have 8,915 Union shells currently. If I fire this four gun battery, it decreases that number by four. Simple. In any scenario, it is a good idea to keep an eye on your available ammunition and not expend it too quickly. In some scenarios, this probably will not be an issue, but in some of the larger ones, you will need to ration your shells to make sure they last until the end of the fighting. Being engaged in a battle after the ammunition has been expended is disastrous. When playing against the AI or another opponent, you can control your own automated fire by coming up here to the AI and clicking on Adjust Auto Defensive Fire. By default, your guns will fire at their maximum range during the enemy's turn. You can limit this to minimum, firing only when the enemy is within 4 hexes, or to medium. Medium will fire at short ranges, but only intermittently at longer ranges. Keeping a close eye on your artillery ammunition is very important in these games. Artillery by itself is very vulnerable to capture by enemy infantry and cavalry. 
A lone artillery unit in a hex is an almost irresistible target to your opponent and they will usually charge them if given a clear path. You should always protect your artillery with close infantry support and, if possible, with a unit sharing the same hex as them. Your artillery can be destroyed by enemy artillery fire or possibly uncrewed by enemy infantry fire. Once uncrewed, the unit will have this uncrewed label on its information box. They are unable to move or fire until they are recrewed by a friendly unit. To do so, you need to use an infantry unit and enter the same hex as that artillery unit. During the next turn, with all your movement points available, highlight both the infantry unit and the artillery unit. Come up here to command and select recrew battery. You will notice the infantry unit is reduced by 25 men per gun to recrew the battery. Further, the battery is automatically downgraded to the lowest possible rating. Another command that you can use is something called spiking your artillery. When you spike your artillery, you are intentionally destroying your own guns to keep them from falling into enemy hands and allowing them the full amount of victory points they would gain from their capture. Spiked guns are permanently disabled and may not be used again by either side. To spike your guns, you need to highlight the artillery unit and then come up to the command menu and click on Spike Battery. The unit will now be spiked as seen on the graphic down here. This is a command which should only be used as a last resort when you have no chance to escape an impending attack. When an artillery unit is overran by enemy infantry or cavalry, it simply is destroyed and vanishes from the map. That is, unless you are using the artillery capture optional rule. In my opinion, this optional rule is the most confusing and complicated rule in the entire game. In theory, it allows for artillery to be overran and captured by the enemy rather than immediately destroyed. In reality, there are so many little known quirks and stipulations with overran artillery, which confound and confuse even the most veteran of players. In fact, there are so many stipulations surrounding artillery capture that I don't even have time to go into them all here. For an explanation of artillery capture, you can consult the user's guide or, even better, check out our club's training academies. The link is in the description below. My opinion is just to play with artillery capture turned off and save yourself a serious headache. Artillery is most effective when it is massed in hexes to concentrate firepower. In most games, the limit is 16 guns per hex, but this can vary based on the parameter data in the game. While these stacks can cause great damage to enemy positions, they remain very vulnerable to enemy units and need to be protected at all times. Guns cannot effectively defend themselves in a charge made by enemy infantry or cavalry. The proper use of artillery is critical to your battlefield success. It basically boils down though to making sure that they are in the right place at the right time and keeping them protected from enemy attacks. That concludes this part of the American Civil War Gaming Club's introductory series on John Tiller Software's Civil War games. I hope you have learned a bit more about artillery from this video and how to use it in our games. In our next video, we will head westward to Tennessee and the Battle of Franklin. There we will discuss Malay combat and how those are conducted. We will also talk about how different factors can increase or decrease your odds of success during a Malay. As always, feel free to check out our club at acwgc.net. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to be notified of future updates. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.